Welcome back everyone to ASEAN News. In today's program, we bring you the latest update of information from around ASEAN region and its surrounding and here they are. Thailand held mass cremation for victims of massacre in the country. Mourners gathered at the temples in Northeast Thailand for the cremation of children and teachers killed in a nursery massacre. Our intention is to send the children and their teacher off to heaven. The teacher will take the lead and the 18 children will follow her steps to heaven according to our beliefs and the desires of their parents and everyone here to send them off. Crowds gather around the normally sleepy town of Utai Sawan to lay flowers and join queues of mourners paying their last respects to those slain in a three-hour gun and knife attack by a former Bangkok police sergeant which marked the worst massacre in Thailand's recent history. Nineteen of the victims were expelled in a ceremony at Rat Samaki Temple in Utai Sawan. In this attack, there were 36 dead, including 22 children. Police identified the attacker as Panya Kamrap, 34, a former Bangkok police sergeant who was discharged in January after being in possession of methamphetamines. Myanmar court rule on Suchi on corruption charge. The court and military ruled Myanmar is expected to deliver a verdict in one of multiple corruption cases against the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi. A property developer named Mang Weik appeared on state controlled MRTV in 2021 and alleged Suu Kyi had taken four different illegal payments from him, totaling about $550,000 in 2019 and 2020, when she was Myanmar's de facto civilian leader in the role of state councillor. Since being forced from power in a military coup last year, Nobel laureate Suu Kyi has been on trial for more than a year on multiple charges ranging from corruption and incitement to leaks of official secrets for which the combined maximum sentences are more than 190 years. According to a source, in the same month, she was also judged to have committed fraud in a November 2020 general election. Suu Kyi, 77, was sentenced to three years in jail with hard labor. Suu Kyi, a figurehead of Myanmar's opposition to decades of military rule, has already been sentenced to at least 20 years in prison in separated cases, mostly related to corruption charges, but she denies all accusations against her. In June, Myanmar military authorities transferred Suu Kyi to solitary confinement in a prison in the capital Napitiao from an undisclosed location. Foreign visitors arrive as Japan reopens for visa-free travel. Japan opened its doors to tourists after closing them for two and a half years due to travel restrictions sparked by the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Visa-free travel was reinstated for visitors from dozens of countries, bringing an end to some of the world's strictest border controls. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is hoping the move will invigorate the economy and reap some benefits from the yen's light to a 24-year low. Kishida said the government will aim to attract 5 trillion yen or 34.5 billion in annual tourist spending. But Japan's decision to fully reopen appears to have stimulated some long pent up demand. President Yuji Akasaka said flag carrier Japan Airlines has seen inbound bookings triple since the border easing announcement. Meanwhile, according to the Nikkei newspaper, international travel demand won't fully recover until around 2025. FIFA and Indonesian football body will form test first after fatal stampede. Officials said the Indonesian Football Association and World Soccer Governing Body, FIFA, will form a joint task force in a bid to improve crowd control and safety measures after a deadly soccer stampede earlier this month. 
The joint task force will also include members of the Asian Football Confederation, as well as the police and the ministries of sports, home affairs, health and public works. The head of the Indonesian Football Association, PSSI, Muhammad Iriawan, told reporters after a meeting with FIFA officials, under the plan, Indonesian police will ensure their standard operating procedures were synchronized with FIFA regulations. Indonesian authorities were under pressure to take swift steps to overhaul soccer safety standards after more than 130 people died during a crowd rush at a match at the Kanjuruan Stadium in East Java on October 1st. Authorities hand out supplies as floods hit central Thailand. Local authorities handed out relief supplies to villagers living in a flood-affected area in central Thailand. Authorities were seen wading through chest high water in the Bambang district of Ayutthaya province to distribute relief packages going from houses to houses on boats. Pratana Komsot said, living in float waters was difficult, demonstrating how she had to cook while standing in knee deep water. While the seasonal floats are deemed less severe than the ones that also hit the province in 2011, the government has prepared 23 billion baht for assistance and rehabilitation. Japan's space agency order distraction signal after Epsilon rocket fails at launch. Kyoto News Agency and other domestic media reported that the Japanese space agency's Epsilon rocket failed after it was launched and was destroyed. In footage filmed by a town official in Kimotsuki, where the launch took place, a crowd of spectators could be seen watching and filming the rocket's launch from an observation site near the IHI spaceport Uchinohara in Kagoshima at around 9.50 a.m. local time. Kyoto said the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency sent a destruction or a signal to the rocket after detecting trouble. Public broadcaster NHK said the signal was sent after JAXA determined that the rocket was not able to fly safely. NHK said it was the first failure of a major Japanese rocket launch since 2003 and the first of the Epsilon series of rockets. Thailand tourists first return after Taiwan ends COVID quarantine rules. Dozens of excited tourists from Thailand were the first to return to Taiwan and were welcomed by officials with cuddly teddy bears as they stepped off the plane shortly after midnight. Taiwan had kept some of its entry and quarantine rules in place as large parts of the rest of Asia relaxed and lifted them completely, but announced last month that it was finally ending of its mandatory COVID-19 quarantines. Some rules remain including a requirement for people to monitor their health for seven days after arrival and perform rapid tests on themselves. Taiwan was a popular tourist destination, mostly for travelers from Japan, South Korea and Southeast Asia, attracted by the island's cuisine and natural beauty. China launches new environmental satellite to support various fields. China launched a new satellite for disaster reduction emergency management and environment monitoring for the Taiwan Satellite Launch Center in northern Sanxi province. A long march to sea rocket carrying the satellite SSAR-01 lifted off at 6.53 a.m. local time. The satellite has entered the preset orbit. Its primary users will be the Ministry of Emergency Management and the Ministry of Ecology and Environment. The China National Space Administration said the satellite will support disaster prevention, reduction, relief and environmental protection. It will also serve natural resources, water conservancy, agriculture, forestry, earthquakes and other fields. Thursday launch was the 443rd mission by the Long March rocket series.
And thank you for watching, everyone. Enjoy your weekdays ahead. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you again soon.